Hey, you. Yep, you. And new and aspiring business owner, I've got some tough love for you today. Selling to everyone is selling to no one. By making your products and offers appeal to everybody, you're actually stunting your business's growth. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you why. If you've been avoiding selecting a niche for your brand new business because you're afraid it's gonna turn potential customers away, then you definitely wanna stick around. Today, I'm walking you through the secret to finding your niche. So then that way your business can explode in a very major way. Before we go ahead and dive in for the very best advice on creating that business and lifestyle that allows you to have the freedom and flexibility that you've always craved, be sure to go ahead and tap that bell and hit subscribe so you get notified the next time a new video airs. I'm not gonna lie, I was guilty of this myself. When I first started my coaching business back in 2018, I had a really hard time saying no to people who were willing to pay me to solve various problems. I help people find new life partners. I help folks find a new job. I help people lose weight. True story. <laughs> I even help people figure out social media marketing. And I did these all at the same time. And not surprisingly, my business never really saw any traction. It wasn't until I decided to go all in on solving one hyper specific problem which for me is helping people go from nothing to starting a brand new business that ultimately I am uniquely positioned to help with, by the way, <laughs> that my own business finally started to take off. In my paid program, the Validate Your Biz Blueprints, I walk clients through the exact same process that I use to find my own niche in finding theirs. Uh, and a lot of times the niches are very unique and never have been seen before. I call this proprietary system the monetize me method. But before we go ahead and dive into that, let's cover really quickly the most common mistakes that folks make when it comes to selecting a niche. All right, most common mistake number one is selecting too broad of a niche or not niching down far enough. So the best way, I'm gonna share a little story to kind of demonstrate this point. Because just saying you're simply a business coach or saying that you're um, you know, a social media agency just isn't enough. <laughs> so as an example, right, I very recently found out that I have gallbladder disease and it was picked up by my midwives who were helping me, you know, when I was going to deliver my daughter, which happens earlier this year. And obviously a midwife is not equipped to help you cure your gallbladder. <laughs> right. And they're also not going to send me to a general practitioner or a GP to solve that because they have knowledge in a wide array of different areas, but not that one specific thing. I needed to go and meet with a doctor who knew specifically about gallbladder disease because it was fairly specific. I needed to learn whether or not I was going to need surgery or if it was something I was going to be able to live with. So ultimately I ended up getting referred to a gastroenterologist, but the reason why I use this to demonstrate a point is when you're known for solving a specific problem, right? So a gastro, they specifically deal with diseases of your you know, digestive system, right? Your stomach, your gallbladder, your intestines, all that. That is what they are known for. That is their specialty, right? That's an example of niching down, right? And being hyper specific. Whereas if I were to just go to my GP, yeah, they go and they help me stay healthy, but they're not going to be able to help me with that one specific thing. They're still going to refer me to the gastro. So when you're able to kind of go, you know, through a broader niche, so let's say business coaching as an example, I'll use myself as an example, right? So there are a lot of business coaches out there. But for me specifically, I specialize in helping aspiring, so folks who have never been in business, they don't really have an idea, they just know they want to own a business, uh, to first year entrepreneurs. Doesn't mean I can't work with all businesses, Lord knows I've got the experience to do it, but I am best known for helping that one specific subset of business owners. And this makes it much, much easier within my own network you know, so for example, other business coaches that I'm friends with or even um, different marketers or agencies, when they 
meet with somebody that's got a brand new business, they know specifically to send them to me because that is my specialization. So by not selecting a hyper-specific niche, you're actually preventing other people from being able to send you business because people don't know who to send to you. Another mistake I see time and time again is ignoring your prior work experience and expertise. Uh, this happens a lot when you know, you're coming into a brand new field and you think that your prior work completely does not relate to anything that you're doing currently. So best example for this for me is I have a fine arts degree, <laughs> right? So a lot of folks would completely dismiss that, you know, and be like, oh, this has absolutely nothing to do with my niche. But no, it has everything to do with my niche because my ability to be able to think outside of the box and to think creatively is what positions me well to help other people creatively think outside of the box on different business opportunities that would make sense for them. So in the programs and what I teach, we're in the business of creating businesses that have never been done before. And I am uniquely positioned to help with that because of my fine arts degree and because of my arts experience. No other business coach can do that the same way that I do. So I don't care if you're you know, a nurse that's suddenly becoming a time management coach, right? There are certain things that you could pull from your prior experience and your prior degrees into whatever it is that you wanna be doing today and have it make a huge impact and become known for it. So that's a really important part of niching that I think that people forget. And lastly, another big, big mistake, and I'll admit I was guilty of this too, is by ignoring what problems people are already asking you for help with. So a lot of times people are already coming to you, whether they be friends or family or colleagues or coworkers, and they're asking you for help on one specific thing and you just do it all the time because you don't think anything of it because it's super easy for you, right? That's why everybody asks you for help on it. But truth is you could be getting paid to help people with this problem. So for me, I never thought to niche down further to aspiring new business owners until I realized I was that person that my friends were always coming to for business advice on starting a new business. I've had clients that have you know, gone into time management coaching because their friends were constantly asking, oh my God, how do you get so much done in a day <laughs> with your day job? Um, so there are lots of different opportunities when you kind of dig down into, okay, well, what problems am I already solving for people? And is this something I can get paid for? And by ignoring that, it is a big, big mistake. Is this all making sense so far? If so, definitely go ahead, give this video a like and drop me a thumbs up in the comments. The secret to finding your niche, the, the niche that only you are uniquely positioned to help with, is something I call the monetizing. It's proprietary, it's something I've created on my own. And I'm gonna walk you through how it works today. Your perfect niche is at the intersection of three circles. So we got the three different circles. So first one, life experience. What do I mean like by this? This is everything you've experienced in your life from your childhood all the way up through today, right? So this is, what is it that you love to do? as a kid, uh, what challenges or hurdles did you overcome, you know, in, in grade school and high school? Um, what challenges did you overcome in as an adult? Uh, what have you experienced in your life? <laughs> all told, when you list it all out on paper and you look, you'll notice there's an underlying theme that there's a, you know, one theme that comes up over and over and over again. And if you're able to really articulate what that is, that kind of helps sum up your life experience. So next up is your education. So back to what I was talking about before in terms of mistakes, right? It's a mistake when you ignore your prior work experience and expertise, right? So your education is a big part of this. So you want to look at every single degree, every single certification you've gone in, uh, it could be an elective course. Look at all the skills that you've learned to date because all those skills is part of your education and it's something that you specifically are equipped to do. So 
back to what I was talking about before and trying to find a gastroenterologist to help me with my gallbladder, I needed to find somebody who studied diseases of the gallbladder <laughs> in order to be able to help me, right? So that comes back to this education part. I wasn't going to you know, work with just a general practitioner who has just like a chapter out of the book on gallbladder disease. I needed somebody who, you know, read and wrote the whole book on the subject, right? So that's your education. The next circle is impact, right? So what impact do you want to have on this world? What change do you want to see? So for me personally, my why, and the reason that I get up each and every day whether it be for my business or whether it be for my family, is I strive to inspire my children as well as others to live their lives to their fullest potential, right? That is what motivates me. That is what really, really gets me going. You have to be super clear on what that impact is that you want to have. Because the truth is, Using the monetize me method, your sweet spot for your niche is right here in the middle. So it's going to come at the intersection of your life experience, your education, and the impact that you want to have. When you're able to, you know, journal and explore and ruminate on these questions and get it all out on paper, you'll notice that these three different areas intersect here. And that's going to be the common theme for everything. So let's just use myself as an example. So in my life experience, again, I was a creative, I was an artist, I uh, was a natural entrepreneur, I started my first business when I was seven. <laughs> right? Um, these are all things that kind of tied into my life experience. I also underwent uh, significant trauma and certain parts of my life. I had uh, in a five year span, uh, a miscarriage, an abusive marriage, a divorce, um, a suicide loss. So a lot of stuff happening all at once. I'm very, very good at dealing with sudden pivots and changes. Um, so these are all things that kind of tie into my life experience. From there, my education, I have an art school degree, <laughs> right? So I can draw really well, I can paint really well. Uh, which helps me in my creativity and being able to help people think outside of the box. But at the same time with my education, I also have 15 plus years spent as a senior executive working for my family's business, being the third generation to be running it. So that's a lot of business education packed into those 15 years. My education is also every single book I've ever read, every single podcast I've ever listened to. I am a voracious reader. <laughs> I read a lot. Uh, I also invest a lot in my own personal growth. So that's every coach I've ever hired, every mentor I've ever worked with, all goes in this education area, right? And kind of ties into what I'm doing. The impact I want to have, which I've already shared, is that I want to inspire people to live life to their fullest potential, right? Their highest good by helping and serving others. When I was able to kind of intersect all of these things, knowing that I was best equipped to work as a business coach because of the fact that I'm a third generation entrepreneur and I have that experience, but based on the impact I wanted to have in helping people live lives to their, their highest purpose, that really working with aspiring and new entrepreneurs, I'm very well suited for it, right? Especially when you look at, you know, being able to think outside of the box and listen and come up with creative ideas on what people can do to make money and more or less create businesses that work to complement their lifestyle instead of the other way around, right? So this ultimately is how the monetize me process works. <laughs> Using myself as an example. So feel free to kind of, you know, take out a piece of paper, check it out and see what you land on. So that about sums it up. If you're stuck on finding the perfect niche for your new business and you'd like some hands-on help and support implementing the monetize me method that I shared in today's video, I'd love to invite you to book a call to discuss whether or not my Validate Your Biz Blueprint program can help you achieve your goals. Apply to book your call today by clicking the link below in the description. So go ahead and check out these videos next for even more ways to learn how to launch and scale your brand new business 
And if you like this video today, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. I'll see you next time.